Hey everyone, my name is Ryan Sisko. Today I'm going to be giving you a brief overview of Spear. So primarily, Spear is a writing and note-taking tool, but you can use it for things like managing tasks and projects as well. So let's get started with the basics. So the first thing you need to know about Spear is that you're always in a workspace. In this particular workspace, you can see that I have several databases over here, as well as this page down here at the bottom, which is the page we're looking at right now. At the top here, I can see the workspace icon as well as the title for this workspace. So in this case, this is my second brain workspace. And if I wanted to rename this, I could just click on it and give it a new name. If I want to create a new workspace, I can just come over here to the library panel and click on this new workspace button. This is also where I can switch to a new workspace if I want to, and I can also pin my favorite workspaces to the top. Okay, next up in this panel, you can see that we have our pages, stacks, databases, and boards in here as well. So this panel, the library panel, is where I can have access to all the content in my account. Going back to the workspace for a second, one of the great things about it is that I can add the same page, stack, database, and board to as many workspaces as I want. So it gives me tons of flexibility in terms of how I want to organize things. If I want to add something from the library panel to the workspace I'm currently in, all I have to do is just click on the item. I can also drag and drop items from the library panel as well. So for example, I can drag this over and place it right here. And you can do that too. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about the sidebar over here. So the sidebar is broken up into three sections. We have our favorites at the top, and then these two sections, the workspace bin and the landing zone, these are a part of the workspace we're currently in. So let's start with the landing zone. So the landing zone is where I can create new content directly in this workspace. So for example, if I want to create a new page in this workspace, just click this button here. And if I want to name it, um, all I have to do is click this pencil icon. And that's also true uh, of any of the items over here in the library panel as well. Now, if you want to rename something, you just click the, the pencil right there. So in this case, we're going to click the pencil, and we'll call this demo page. So you might be wondering, <clears throat> why do we have the workspace broken up into these two different sections like this, the workspace bin and the landing zone? So the whole purpose of this, and the great thing about this setup, is that it allows me to be organized and messy and creative at the same time. So when I'm creating new content, I might not necessarily know what to do with it yet. Um, and in that case, I can just leave it down here. Um, another thing that might happen as you're working in Spears, you might be creating and opening up things, and very quickly you'll see that this area of the workspace can get cluttered and kind of chaotic. But it doesn't really matter, though, because the important content in this workspace is still nice and neatly organized here. If I want to add something from the landing zone to the workspace bin, I can just drag it in like this. And if I want to clear this section out, um, I can just click these little X icons right here. You can also remove things from the workspace bin by clicking on the menu and then selecting the remove from list option. We made it a little bit more difficult to remove things from the workspace bin just so you don't remove something unintentionally. Okay, so next up we have the favorites. So the favorites is where I can put things that I want to have access to in any workspace. So for example, Regardless which workspace I'm in, I can always access my goals page, this task manager, as well as this capture database. Additionally, I can also put my favorite workspaces in the favorites, allowing me to switch between them much faster than going over to the library panel. Okay, so coming back to the second brain workspace, let's talk a little bit about writing and editing in Spear. So if I want to see all the different types of content that I can add to a page in Spear, all I need to do is type a forward slash, and this brings up the slash command menu. From here I can use the arrow keys to go up and down, and then I can choose the next block type that I want to add. We'll talk a little bit more about blocks in just a second. Um, also, you'll note that some of these items have markdown uh, shortcuts on them, and that just allows you to use markdown to format things as you go along. So in this case, I want to add a heading 2, so I'll just press enter, and then we'll type famous quotes. If I want to stylize some text, I can also do that uh, just like you normally would in any other text editor, and just select the text and then apply the settings you want. Uh, from this toolbar, I can also apply links to my text as well if I want to. If I want to change the style of a block that I've already created, I can just click on this menu here, 
and we can change it to something else. So for example, we could change it to a checklist item. Um, and you can also change blocks using markdown as well. So the markdown for a quote is the greater than symbol and then a space. So I can switch it back like that. So an important thing to know about pages is that every piece of content on a page is a block. Basically, the main benefit of blocks is that it allows us to move our ideas around by drag and drop. So for example, I can drag this idea right here, and if I want to put it back, I can just drag it back. Um, another cool thing about blocks is that you can nest blocks inside one another. So for example, if I wanted, I could press tab, and I could nest this Mona Lisa block underneath Notable Works, which then allows me to expand and collapse that content if I want to. So it's a really great tool for outlining and things like that. If I want to undo this nesting, I can just press Shift Tab. You can also nest blocks by drag and drop, like this. In this case, I don't want to do that, so I'm going to put that back. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about stacks. So I'm going to come over here to the Stacks tab of the Library panel, and then I'm going to click on this stack right here. So a stack is a tool in Spirit that allows us to build a document that's made up of many pages rather than just one. If I want to see the structure and all the pages that make up this stack, I can just click on the Table of Contents icon here. And now I can see everything that's inside this stack. If I click on one of the pages, it'll zoom me to that section. And then I can edit this page just like I would any other normal page. So I can type some content and edit it inline. Um, and if I want to reorder the sections, I can just do so by drag and drop. And you can see those two pages are now swapped. You'll also notice these gray bars on the left here. That just shows me where the beginning and end of each page is. So that's just a little handy visual there. And if you hover over them, you can also see the title of the page. If I want to add a new page to this stack, I can just click on this New Page button here. And you can see that page now appears at the bottom of the stack and we can give it a title, page A, and we could then add some content to it. If I want to remove this page, all I have to do is click on the menu here and then click Remove from Stack. I can also add folders as well and organize the pages uh, using folders if I want to. So this is a really great way of organizing a document in really clear sections, and it just makes it really easy to reorder things if you want to. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about boards. So I'm going to come over to this book project, and here we have a board. So I'm going to close this for one second and just close the library panel as well. So on this board are all my ideas for chapter one of my book. I've got some random thoughts here. I've got an earlier draft of the chapter. I've got the chapter summary and uh, some kind of inspiring pictures for the location in the chapter. So the great thing about a board is I can see all this content at the same time. And it just kind of cuts down on the friction of having to open and close things all the time. If I want to add a new page or a new stack to this board, I can just click these buttons up here. And if I want to rearrange the content on the board, all I have to do is click on the board contents panel. And then, for example, let's say I wanted to put this chapter right here. I can just pick this up and drag and drop it like that. In addition to creating pages and stacks directly on a board, you can also add content to a board from elsewhere in the app. So, for example, if I wanted to, I could come over here and I could drag this to-do list and place it on the board as well. So I'm going to put it at the top so you can see it. Um, you can do the same thing actually with the stack as well. That's something I forgot to mention. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this for now because I don't want that in there. And now let's talk a little bit about databases. So if I come over here to this database, this is a database where I put pages and notes and things on ideas that I don't quite know what to do with yet. So I've just called it the Capture Database. This is just where I can dump things in the meantime and I can organize them later. And you'll notice that uh, I've tagged these pages with uh, various types of tags under this content type tag and then I have some additional tags as well. So the great thing about databases is that you can organize content in so many different ways using the filter, group, and sorting options up here. So for example, if I wanted to see all the pages in this database that have the note tag on them, I can just use the filter, and then I can say add filter condition, and I want to find all the pages where the content type tag is a note. And now I can see all those pages with that note tag. 
If I want, I can switch to something else. So for example, maybe I want to see all the pages with the book tag. And you can also double up filter conditions as well. So let's say maybe I wanted to see all the pages with the book tag and also the note tag as well. So in this case, I want to set this to or, and then we will include the note tag. And now you can see that I have all the pages with the note tag and the book tag. So it just allows me to drill into content really quickly. If I want to shut this filter off, I can just click here and then click on these garbage icons. Uh, another cool feature about database is the grouping feature. So for example, you can see that all these tags are mixed up. Um, if I want to see all these pages organized according to this tag, all I have to do is click on the group button and then I can say let's group by content type. And just like that you can now see all the pages nice and neatly organized according to their content type tag. Uh, just as before, if I want to shut this grouping off, I can just click on the garbage icon here. If I want to see the content on any of these pages, all I have to do is just click on it. And that pulls the page up in the side peak panel. And I can edit this page and make changes if I want to. And then when I'm done editing this page, um, and I don't say I don't want to see it anymore, I can just click on this uh, X icon up here. If I want to add a new page to this database, I can just come to the bottom and click Add Row. And in this case, I already have a Pages column. So it's giving me the option to just type and create a new page. So for example, maybe I just saw a great movie, uh, The Great Escape. Just add that here. And then I'm going to add my movie tag to this. And so it's very easy to add things to the database. And then if I want, I could add content to this page and uh, leave my review or something like that. Okay, uh, there is also one other way to add content uh, to a database, and that's just by dragging and dropping them in. So for example, maybe I want to add this to-do list to this database. Now I can just drop it, and in a second, now it pops in there, and then I can tag it just like before. If I don't want this page in this database, I can just click on the button here and then select Delete Row. Okay, so now let's talk about sorting real quick and to do that I want to jump over to this database over here and I'll close this panel. So in this case maybe I want to sort things according to the priority. So all I have to do is click on the sort button and then I can select the priority field and now you can see that all the items are sorted according to priority. But one quick thing to note about the sorting feature is when I'm sorting uh, using these tags it's not sorting alphabetically per se so you know L M and then H is not uh, alphabetically ordered. Uh, it's actually sorting them according to the order that I have the tags set in the field settings. So if I were to reorder these, it would sort them according to that order. And once I have the order set, then I can switch back and forth. I can do uh, ascending or descending and set it up however I want. So same thing with the status column. So for example, the tags in the status column here are ordered according to backlog doing done. So if I sort based on that column, you will see that it organizes them in that fashion. So there you have it. Okay, so now before we finish up, let's talk about a few other features real quick. So the first feature I want to touch on is bidirectional linking. So the great thing about bidirectional links is that it allows you to connect pages together with a link that travels both ways. So uh, I'll demonstrate that real quick. So let's say I want to link this page to my Leonardo da Vinci page that I've already created. I can just select the text and then create link. And then all I have to do is, uh, you can see it already found it. Um, I can just press enter. And now when I click on this link, it will pull that page up in the side peak here. And you'll also notice that at the top of this page, there's a little link icon. And this shows me all the links that are pointing at this page. So if I click on that, I could then access that one, and if I click on this, it switches back. So bidirectional links are just a great way of connecting ideas. It just makes it really easy to get back and forth between pages that are linked together. There's also another method for linking pages together. Um, you don't have to always select the text like this. Um, there's a shortcut that you can do, and it's bracket bracket. And then I can use the arrow keys to go up and down and pick something, or I can search and say, I want to find the demo page. And there it is, and then I can just press enter. And now, 
I can get to that page as well. Okay, so now let's come back to our Leonardo da Vinci page, and I want to talk about the paragraph editor for a second. So the paragraph editor allows me to instantly split a paragraph into its separate sentences and edit them individually. So to do that, all I need to do is click anywhere inside the paragraph and then press control period. And now all the sentences within the paragraph are separated automatically and if I want to edit them, I can do so and I can also rearrange them very easily by drag and drop. So it's a great way if you want to just rearrange the sentences within a paragraph really quick, this is a great method for doing that. When you're done editing, all you have to do is press this Merge Sentences button. Okay, so another feature I want to touch on real quick are split screens. So let's say I wanted to see this capture database and this stack side by side. I couldn't do this with a board because boards only allow me to view pages and stacks side by side. But with split screens, I actually can view these both side by side. So to do this, all I have to do is open up one of the items first that I want to be a part of the split screen, and then I just grab the other one and drag it to either side of the element that I already have open. So in this case, I want to view this database and this stack on the right side. And when I let go, I can now see my database and my stack side by side. Another great thing about split screens is that I can have more than one of them at the same time. So for example, I could open up this books database and then I could open up my capture database and place them side by side. And now I have two split screens down here. You can always identify split screens by the line and dots on the left side of the resources down here. If you want to reorder the position of a split screen in the sidebar, you can just click and drag on the lines here and move the split screen to a new location like that. Um, you can also reorder the elements within the split screen, so if I wanted to see this stack on the left side rather than on the right, I can just come over here and click and drag. Also, quick note, uh, there's this fine blue line around the split screen element right now, and that's showing me that when I drop this, it's going to land inside the split screen. If I keep dragging up, the blue line will disappear, and now this element would land outside the split screen. In this case, I don't want to do that, so I'm going to drag it down a little bit and then drop it, and now you can see that the two elements are swapped. If I want to get rid of one of these split screens, or both of them, I can just click the X icons here and delete the split screen like that. All right, so the last feature I want to touch on real quick is dark mode. So if you're working in a low light environment and this is just too bright for you, you can easily switch to dark mode by clicking this toggle switch here. And if you want to switch back to light mode, you can just click this button again. All right. That wraps it up for this video. I hope this has been helpful and given you some idea of what you can do with Spear. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.